Uh, speaking of crying, man, I'll just, I'm just going to put it out there. There was one time I called you sobbing. I don't know if you remember this. I do. I do remember that. And I was shaking and I was so scared because when I started this podcast, I did it like on a short, very short notice. Like the day that I shot my first episode, me and Reed were like, we got to do this now. We got to go grab cameras. And I didn't really see the future in it. I didn't know where I was going. And then in, in, in public, people would come up to me and just be like, oh, I love your videos. They're really funny. Um, and now people are coming up to me in a, in a very, very different way. A very, very different way. And I feel like I'm not worth it. They'll come up to me and they'll be like, they'll say very meaningful things. And when they're saying that I was the one that pushed them there, all I kept hearing was like, I'm a fraud, bro. Like, you guys are seeing me something I'm so different because I'm doing things that are so far from God. And, and I called Cliff one day and I was just sobbing on the phone. I go, bro, I'm a fraud. I'm ashamed of myself. Like, I keep trying to push people in the right directions that I'm trying to go towards, but I'm failing myself at it. And they're looking at me like I'm killing it. And, and then I start realizing that, my God, am I, am I even going to go to heaven? And am I even forgiven? Because I, I, I know that I shouldn't be doing some of these things. And yet I, I get so exhausted trying not to do them that I'll fall and I'll, and I'll pick myself back up. And, and I just, I sometimes want to literally take my flesh and rip it from me because I just feel like this is the only thing that's holding me back is like, why are these desires here? And, 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 and I have these desires. I can't fight these desires. What do I do with these desires? And, and I, I, it's just this version of me that I want to be, but then there's this real version of me that I'm very scared of putting in front of God. And so like, it gets overwhelming and now I understand why people don't even want to talk to God because it's in, it's in a mountain that it's like impossible to climb. And, and even if I do climb it, it's like I really want to be climbing that mountain right now. And I really don't even want to be here right now. And I'm lying to you if I say that I want to be here. And, and I'm just, forgive me because I am trying to f f stop swearing, but I'm full of shit. And, I'm a, and, and I am a garbage human being. And I am nowhere near what these people that are on the street are, are shaking my hand and, and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm not that guy. I'm a wannabe. I want to be that guy. And you told me a verse that like, Cliff, it saved my life. Like, I can't even tell you how many times. I can't even tell you how many times. Like, I wouldn't even want to open up my Bible because like, I feel like, I feel like I'm, uh, like I'm the Pharisee. Like I'm the guy that when God sees, he's like, yo, you love me with your lips, but you're so far away from me with your heart. And then you read me a letter that Paul wrote that he was talking to God and how he says that he can't wait for death so he could separate himself from flesh. How can I explain to somebody that you're never going to be perfect? You're always going to fail God but yet you're still going to be good enough to go to heaven. That, I understand, I understand the term of good news now. Because like good news, you're a piece of garbage, mm -hmm. yet you're still able to come here. Mm -hmm. How do I teach a man to believe that when I can't even believe it myself? You bet. Good question, George. I'd like you to read Romans chapter 7, where the apostle Paul says, the good that I want to do, I don't do. The evil that I don't want to do, I do. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ. But where's the line? Where's the line? You see so many people that are, there's a, there's a certain person that goes, well, God made me this way, right. and I'm still going to love God. Right. And then you have a guy that goes like me, like, oh, I know I shouldn't be doing that. Oh, and I don't do it. But when no one's looking, I do it sometimes. Okay. So we've, we've been given the spiritual discipline. First of all, you repent. Repentance is not whitewashing and saying, oh, I didn't do anything wrong. Repentance is not blaming. Oh, it's their fault. Repentance is not self-pity. Oh, gosh, I'm just a loser. I'm no good and just drowning myself in self-pity. And repentance is not self-flagellation, beat up on Cliff, because he's such a loser. Repentance is, God has made me in his image, I've made some irresponsible decisions. Lord Jesus, please forgive me. Now, I've got to accept that forgiveness, which means I am not going to follow an idol that says, perfect Cliff, perfect Cliff, you've got to be perfect in order to make it to heaven. If that's true, I'm not going to heaven because I'm not perfect. All right? 
I have to accept Christ's forgiveness. And if I don't accept Christ's forgiveness, what I'm doing is I'm worshiping an idol whose approval means more to me than God's approval. George, God approves of you. Bill, God approves of you when you ask him for forgiveness. You are forgiven. And that is what makes the cross so significant because that's where Christ paid the penalty for the garbage in my life, in your life, in his life, and offers us a gift that we do not deserve. I am not good enough to go to heaven. I am not good enough to go to heaven because I'm like you. I'm a wretch inside. I got some really warped motives, ambitions, and I'm real glad there's no picture of my fantasy life up on right, the screen right now. I'd be horribly embarrassed, okay? So I'm not good enough, but Christ is good enough. I need him and I trust in him. And when someone comes off with, well, that's really simplistic and trite. Oh, no, 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 no. When I realize that someone died for me, everything changes in here. Now, I still have bad habits, but no, 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 no. My desire, as your desire is, is to obey him, to honor him. He died for you, man. What more could someone do for you? And when you trust in him, then you begin to want to obey him as Lord. But that's a lifelong process. And if I die in road rage, I'm not going to hell because I died committing a sin and getting road rage. Mm. No, because my going to heaven is not because I'm good enough. My going to heaven is because Christ is good enough. He did it on the cross for me. My faith is in him. And if I die losing it on the road with road rage, that's wrong. But I am still going to heaven because of what Christ did for me and my faith is in him. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, but and not to like ask more questions, but I just I really want to like really understand fully. We have a man like you that yeah, you're touring this world, teaching and preaching, and I find it so fascinating. You just started glowing in front of me, like <laughs> you, so many, just, you just start, you just got so bright. No, so many times if yeah. the sun wasn't there, you would give an answer, and the sun came. And, yeah. So many times. Not that we're looking for signs. <laughs> 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 uh, but um okay so there's a gentleman like you you know like and you, you you're preaching and you're chasing god when the doors are closed and the doors are open and then you have a man like me that's on a podcast speaking about christ and old enough to know better young enough to be stupid <laughs> and like i fail a lot and then we have another man who doesn't even talk about god doesn't preach about God, but let's just say this man loves God just as much as we do. Mm -hmm. But he gets drunk every night mm -hmm. because he is. Sorry, I have conversations with people and I just remember them. And maybe his parents did something to him or whatever, but he runs away. He escapes through alcohol or weed yep. or yep. drugs or yep. any type of these type of situations. And his beginnings were a lot different. He loves God with all his heart, but he doesn't mm -hmm. read his Bible. He mm -hmm. doesn't go out and preach. But he gets messed up every day, mm -hmm. but he feels bad about it. He's not happy about it. Yep. How does that man get to heaven? Because like, shouldn't we look at him and be like, bro, you shouldn't be there if you love God. If you love God, you'd be able to get out of that situation by using his word, by using this, the discipline. And like when I would read comments of people like, why is he swearing? And then I cut swearing. And then I realized like I just did an episode with John Bellion and I just dropped the F-bomb like so many times. I'm looking back at it. I'm like, bro, what's wrong with you? Like... There's so many things that I, I want to control, but I can't control because of habits. But then I look at it like, okay, that's just swearing. But what about the man who's addicted to drugs and he's destroying his temple? And like, where is the fine line between you're going to heaven and you're not going to heaven? Where is it? Where, where is the line that I could help somebody? We don't like, know. That's the whole Roman 7 piece where mm -hmm. if it's the top rabbi this world has ever seen, mm -hmm. Paul, and he, is, he was the head of the church with Peter. If he says, the things I want to do, I don't. And the things I don't want to do, I do. That's got to give us some kind of pass, right? He's the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. One passage, George, that you may really like. I was teaching it to a group of men right out here. And it was Matthew 7. And at one point it says, unless your righteousness outdoes that of the Pharisees, you will not go to heaven. Two guys literally stood up and walked out the door. Yeah. <laughs> Could you repeat that? Yeah. If your righteousness... Unless your righteousness outdoes that of the Pharisees, you will not be saved. And Could you break that down for somebody who has sure. no idea what that means? Exactly. The, so the Pharisees were known to tithe a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. The Pharisees were known to keep the letter of the law better than anybody else. 
So they were known to be the purest form of people. So you would say, oh, no porn, no alcohol. They're going to heaven, of course. Yeah. But then on the inside of the cup, Jesus says, they completely, your father's the devil. He says that. One time I said that to my brother. And I don't know why my dad was kind of offended by that. All right, but, uh, Wait, that you, was a weak, you, weak joke right there. That was a dad joke, all right? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I was like, I no, no, like, but did you say that? No, I heard what you said. I just was like, what did you bro do? Like, yeah, yeah, I thought you asked. <laughs>